Hi, my name is Chinami, and I moved to America all the way from Japan when I was 12 years old. The first thing I noticed about being here was just how big everything was. The houses, the food portions, the cars, everything was huge in America, and I loved it. I ate as much food as I could at every restaurant I went to with my mom and always asked for seconds, which left her totally embarrassed, but I didn't care. I didn't even want to move here and I had to break up with my boyfriend before we left because I wouldn't see him again for so long. We both cried a lot. So that's why I figured I would have as much fun as I could in America since I didn't really have a choice about moving. As you may have guessed, some of the kids at school were horrible because I looked different and couldn't speak English very well at first, but I didn't let their awful hazing make me feel bad. I was confident and knew who I was, so I always walked with my head held up and didn't let anything anyone said or did make a difference in how I felt about myself. The bullies were not used to this approach at all. It just left them confused and scratching their heads. I guess they never met anyone quite like me before. Good. So eventually, they just left me alone. One day, my mom asked why I had no friends at school, and I told her they were all jerks. I don't believe that. I'm sure a lot of them are exactly what you say, but there must be some nice ones too. I love how independent you are, but everyone needs a friend. The truth is, my mom knew something I was trying to hide, which was, as comfortable as I was with myself, I was terrified of making friends or dating anyone new. In Japan, we had moved at least six times because of my mom's job. Each time we went to a new town or city, I had to say goodbye to one of my best friends or boyfriends. My heart broke every time it happened, and I always asked my mom if we could just stay in one place for at least a couple of years so I could have some real friends, but she said she couldn't guarantee that. So I decided to only rely on myself, but the truth was, I was getting pretty bored and lonely hanging out with only myself and my cat all the time. But still, I couldn't do it. I was too scared. I ate lunch alone, walked home alone, and spent every weekend playing video games or dressing my cat up in fun costumes. Until one day when I was in eighth grade, a boy called Max came to my lunch table and sat across from me. He started talking as if we knew each other our whole lives, and I didn't even have time to be scared like I had been with everyone else because, well, he just didn't give me a choice. I told mom I wouldn't talk to Max anymore in case we had to move, but she told me this time we would be living here for a long time, so I may as well try to find a real friend. From then on, Max and I were best friends. He helped me to learn English and I taught him some Japanese, but he was terrible at it. I know what you're thinking. We're gonna fall in love because we're such good friends, but nope, we just stayed friends. Even as we grew up and went to high school, neither of us had feelings for each other. Thank God too, because he was my biggest helper when it came to boys, which is ironic since he was constantly getting broken up with. I tried to warn him about the girls he was dating. They were all shallow and absent-minded, but he didn't care. As long as he had a pretty girl beside him, he felt like he was on top of the world. But of course, they would always break his heart and leave him for someone else, which only made him more sad and want to date prettier girls to prove that he wasn't, as he put it, a total loser and the cycle would begin all over again. You really deserve better, Max. Not according to the girls I date. They always leave me for someone stronger or smarter. Because they don't care about anything other than how popular they are. You're kind and fun and really thoughtful. Why don't you date someone like that? Look who's talking. You don't date anyone. What do you mean? I go on dates all the time. Yeah, one date. And then, no matter how cool they are, you stop talking to them. So many really cool guys want to at least try to be your boyfriend and you never give them a chance. Like who? There was George with the gelled hair and nifty vests, Tom who asked you to the dance, and Pete who, well, doesn't have a lot going for him, but he's really nice. What's so wrong with being single anyway? What's wrong with dating around? You only do it because you're insecure. And you're only single because you're scared. It's a miracle we even became friends. All you ever want to do is be alone with your stupid cat. If you're not careful, you're going to miss out on a lot of great things in life. And what if you meet the one and don't give him a chance? Well, if it's up to you to meet the girl of your dreams, you'll probably pass her up for someone with an expensive car and a pretty face who doesn't even know where Japan is. You know it's happened before. All of a sudden, he stopped talking and just stared off. I thought maybe I really insulted him or something. But then he smiled and said, you're right, what if we switched lifestyles for a month just to see what happens? Switch lifestyles? 
Yeah, you go out with one of those nice guys who likes you for at least three dates, and I'll ask out someone who knows where Japan is, and maybe who won't dump me for the football captain for once. Date someone for three dates? That's practically a relationship. I can't do that. All of a sudden, I couldn't breathe, my palms got sweaty, and I got nauseous. Well, what do you say? But before he had a chance to ask again, I ran out of the cafeteria and hid in the bathroom. I avoided him all day after that and ran home so fast he could never catch up. I guess I was even more afraid than I realized. Mom saw how frazzled I was when I got home and asked, Honey, what's wrong? Max wants me to date someone nice and be happy. What a jerk. I know. I was kidding. Oh, well, I don't need a boyfriend anyway. Well, there we agree. You're not even allowed to have one. What? Since when? When you were little, it was okay. But now you have to focus on your schoolwork, so... No boys. You're the reason I can't get close to anyone. And now you won't even let me if I want? You have too much to do to prepare for college. Sorry, honey. I ran to Max's house right away and told him I was in. What changed? You freaked out earlier. My mom said I couldn't. Ah, yeah, that makes sense. So, you aren't too scared anymore? You mean, what if I fall in love only to have to move again and maybe it just doesn't work out and I'm left broken and hollow and sad and crying like every other time I ever got close to anyone? Yeah. Well, that's easy. I just won't fall in love. And you? You're gonna be able to date a normal girl who doesn't look like a supermodel? Hey, I'm not shallow like that. I just date them because it makes me feel good about myself. But I know, I know, you don't have to tell me. That's not a good reason to be with someone. Then why do you do it? Because if I date a girl I actually like and she breaks up with me, it won't be because she wants to be more popular. It'll be because I really wasn't good enough for her. I don't know if I can take that. Well, I won't do it if you won't. You have to. You can't be scared your whole life. And you can't be insecure your whole life and just date girls who don't even care about you. Fine, but we both have to do it. Okay. We shook hands and made it official. As scared as I was, at least I knew I wasn't alone. Now, all I had to do was find someone I liked, but didn't like enough to actually fall in love with. I stalked the halls trying to find the perfect guy who wouldn't be boring or too full of himself, but also wasn't very cute or smart or caring. This was a lot harder than I expected. I liked Peter, who played basketball and was very confident, but that made him way too attractive, so I kept looking. Eventually, I found Sean, my neighbor who was quiet, respectful, but he didn't play any sports or do any plays. He had only one friend, and I think he got mostly C's in class. He was perfect. Not too confident, not too smart. He was just average. Hi, Sean. Do you want to take me on a date? Um, cool. Come to my house tonight at 7 and pick me up. At home that night, I got dressed and ready and just paced the house waiting for him. But by 7.30, he still hadn't shown up. Hey, you were supposed to pick me up. No, I wasn't. I never agreed to date you. Wait, what? He didn't want to date me? My whole life, I never met a boy who didn't want to date me. Except for the bullies, of course. Are you a bully? No, I just don't want to date anyone. I'm happy as I am. Really? Me too. So why do you want to date me? I'm just trying to get over my fears. Oh, so you're just using me. OMG, I was using him. How could I do that? I'm so sorry, you're right. I'll go away forever now. I left thinking about what a jerk I was for doing that. I have to go to the store if you want to come. We walked and talked and it didn't feel like a date at all. Only two new friends hanging out. I couldn't believe how smart he was and, and how comfortable he was talking to me, who he barely knew. We ended up getting dinner and ice cream and he even paid. I guess it became more like a date than we realized. That night, I realized I had been so judgmental, thinking he wasn't confident just because he didn't play sports or act all cool. He was just being himself. And even though he was very smart, he only got C's because he wasn't that interested in school. Then I realized I really liked him. And oh no, maybe I was falling in love. Max, we have to call it off. I went on one date with Sean and I'm already falling for him. Okay, good because I asked out Ariana, but then I realized I loved how she's so kind and nice and smart and caring, and I just can't handle being rejected by someone like that, so I stood her up. You did what? That's so mean. She's the nicest girl in school. I know. I feel terrible, but I just can't. 
I'm too scared of what it could do to me if she doesn't like me or we break up. I guess I know how you feel. I feel the same way. I really like him, and now I'm too scared to even talk to him. He could totally break my heart with only a few words. Okay, so we agree. We will end this here. Agreed. We shook hands again. After school, I tried to avoid Sean while Max avoided Ariana. We snuck out with our heads down in the halls as classes were dismissed, trying to blend in. And as we turned the corner, there they were, both Sean and Ariana. He was smiling at me, but Ariana was glaring at Max. She marched up to him, almost knocking Sean out of the way, and planted herself right in front of Max. Just because I'm nice doesn't mean you can do that to me. I was ready and waiting and deserve respect. What do you have to say, huh? Uh. Oh, so when you ask me out, you're all smooth, but when you get confronted, you're all like, uh, I don't know. Don't talk to me again. Wait, I'm sorry. I was just scared because you're so nice and so great and everyone loves you. And if we went out and you didn't like me, I would feel so worthless. But you're right. It was so wrong and I'm a coward for not talking to you about it and trying to avoid you. I'm so sorry, Ariana. Hmm. Say more about how great I am. Everyone knows you're the nicest girl in school, and it's true. You're always doing things for other people. But you also don't take any disrespect from anyone, and I love that. The truth is, since we were little, I liked you, but I just didn't have the courage to tell you because if you didn't like me, I couldn't <laughs> handle it. So I date girls who are shallow and not nice at all because they're so different from you. And when they break up with me, it doesn't hurt as much because they're not you. Wow, I had no idea he felt that way about her or about anyone. Ariana kissed him right there in front of everyone and left together. Then Sean came up to me. My turn to be honest. Hi, I'm sorry, but I was going to avoid you too. I know now I was just scared. Of me? of myself, and how I don't think I'm strong enough to handle it if I fall in love with you and it doesn't work out. How do you think people become strong? They take risks, and when they get hurt, they learn and grow. I can't promise we'll be happy forever, but I can tell you I like you and I had fun, and I think that's enough to try. He took my hand and we left together. I don't know what's gonna happen. Maybe Sean and I will be together forever, or maybe I'll have to move again and lose the only guy I ever really loved. And maybe Ariana will end things with Max and break his heart. But what I do know is that just because some things end doesn't mean they weren't important and that it didn't mean anything. I can't control what happens, only how I feel and what I choose to do with it. And I will never again let fear stop me from doing what I want or being with someone I love. Because whatever happens, this is my life and I will choose to live it.